And that nectar that they collect uh, is going to be various thicknesses depending on what it comes from. There's been a lot of rain, not been a lot of rain. Uh, so we try to replicate that with sugar syrup as best we can. What's going on, bee herders? I must be living right. It's a good day. I'm in the honey house mixing up some sugar syrup for the bees. Meanwhile, that noise you hear in the background, that's the wife and mother-in-law on lawnmowers mowing the grass. It's a good day to be at Rankin Bee Ranch. So let's talk about feeding bees. It's a contentious subject. And I don't know why people get wrapped around the axle about how much sugar to put in the water for making sugar syrup. Or should we feed bees or should we not feed bees? Listen, you do you and be happy with that and let other people be, do what they want to do. We're just going to kind of talk about what we do today. One thing I know for sure, especially with all the removals we do, is that starving bees are dead bees. They're not going to do anything for us. They're not going to thrive. They're not going to build up. And they're not going to be ready for next season um, when it comes to honey production. So we feed bees. We feed a lot of bees. Sometimes we do small batches. Sometimes we do big batches. Uh, so what do we feed them? For those of you who aren't beekeepers out there watching my channel, believe it or not, bees don't make honey year-round. Bees collect nectar from nectar sources and convert that into honey through a very elaborate scientific process we're not going to get into today. And that nectar that they collect uh, is going to be various thicknesses depending on what it comes from. There's been a lot of rain, not been a lot of rain. Uh, so we try to replicate that with sugar syrup as best we can. Uh, the two most common ratios of mixing sugar to water to the base of this this feed is either a one-to-one -one ratio or a two-to-one ratio and that's in weight listen I'm no mathematologist so I try to keep it simple I know that one gallon of water weighs approximately 8.3 pounds so if I want one-to-one -one ratio I'm gonna add one gallon of water to 8.3 pounds of sugar if I want a two-to-one ratio I'm gonna have 16.6 .6 pounds of sugar to one gallon of water it can get expensive quick. But like I said, I'm no mathematologist. So I keep life simple. One gallon of water, 10 pound bag of sugar, or if I've got bigger bags, I use that. That's if I want one to one. If I want two to one, then I'm gonna add 20 pounds of sugar to one. That puts me somewhere between one to one and two to one, and the bees are gonna do what the bees do. They're gonna consume it, or they're gonna store it, dehydrate it, and kind of turn it into faux honey, which is a lot of what you buy at the grocery store mostly it's coming from uh, overseas. So one more thing about feeding is we never feed with our honey supers on. So we've already harvested all the honey we're gonna hunt, uh, harvest for this spring and summer. Uh, and the honey supers are off and in storage. You can see some stacked up here behind me. We still got to wrap them. Um, so there's no storage compartment for the honey we collect sitting on the hives now. Anything they store is gonna go in their brood chamber that's where it's going to stay. So that's just kind of some basics. Uh, today we're mixing up some one-to-one. -one. It's still summer down here in Alabama. Whatever they stored, they've got plenty of time. It's plenty hot enough uh, for them to dehydrate uh, that one-to-one -one if they store it. One thing we do add to it is some homemade honey, uh, uh, some homemade honey bee healthy. Whew. Skip there for a minute. Homemade honey bee healthy. I mean, it consists of water, sugar, and various uh, essential oils. Now, you may have heard the saying, I guess not going to come mow inside the shop. They must be mad at me. I'd rather be out there, I believe, because it is an oven inside this building. Okay. So where were we? We were on the honeybee healthy. Um, you've heard the old saying, oil and water will not mix. Well, that's true, but we're going to cheat the system. We add, I probably 
should close the door. Now they're blowing dust in here on me, they hate me. We add some lecithin granules to our water and we mix that well before we add our essential oils. Good gravy. Did you see what happened back there? Never give them a big commercial G return, it gets crazy. Wow. So the lecithin acts as an emulsifier and it allows the water and oil mixture that we're gonna to have to stabilize and stay that way. If we don't add something like less than two in an emulsifier, uh, in a very short order, the oil and water are gonna separate and your honeybee healthy is gonna be no good to you. So we've added roughly five cups of water, maybe between a quarter and a half teaspoon of uh, less than granules and we blended it very well. We'll, we'll hit it again here. Margaritas. tasty and then we're going to add a concoction and we'll provide the recipe for it of different essential oils wintergreen spearmint and tea tree all got I think I got all of this off of Amazon and last is lemongrass every beekeeper should have some lemongrass oil around Serves a lot of purposes. A little dab will do you. A little bit of this goes a long way. So once we've got the less than in, and we mix that well into the water, then we'll begin adding our oils and continue to blend it. I've kept this shelf stable for six to eight months, um, and it did not separate, and it was ready to go. So that's going to go into our sugar syrup mix. The recipe calls for two and a half pounds of sugar in this. My blender's not going to hold that. Um, but it's no big deal because it's going into sugar syrup anyway. I just wanted to feed this alone, then I would probably want to have that sugar in it. In this case, it's going into sugar syrup at a little bit better than one, one to one, so I don't think it's gonna matter. So let's look at how we're mixing that sugar. If you guys have been following us, um, one of our older videos, we took you through the building of this 55 gallon drum uh, sugar syrup mixer. Fairly simple, there's definitely some things I'm gonna change in the next next build. Um, but basically, again, it consists of a sump pump sitting down in there, some piping, a valve, that's gonna turn into a ball valve. A ball valve here to change the flow. So that once we've got it circulated and mixed how we want it, then we're gonna pump it out and pump it in these containers for storage or take it to our feeders. Now, we're gonna put a little bit in an open feed container today uh, and then the remainder is gonna go in storage for some in hive or on or top of the hive feeding uh, via those one gallon buckets and other feeders that we have. Oh, yeah, stay tuned for reviews of the pro note. So we've got 10 gallons of water in. We've already added 50 pounds of sugar. We've mixed it fairly well. It's another upgrade. What a torque. And the output, so it always kicks that pipe back. So we, we're going to put, end up putting 100 pounds of sugar, so there's 50 more pounds over there, there's already 50 pounds in, into that 10 gallons of water. So it's better than a one to one uh, ratio, and the bees lap it up. We're going to get that mixed really well before we add our honeybee healthy, because once we add that, to this mixture, and it's gonna take eight tenths of a cup, 40 teaspoons, and it's one teaspoon per quart of feed. Anyhow, once we add that to this, we're ringing a dinner bell for the bees. That scent's gonna be walking around here a couple of hundred yards away from, from uh, uh, the bees here, or the, the hives here at the home bee yard, but they can find this stuff quick, especially now that we're in a dirt. So stay tuned, we're gonna add the rest. Okay, we've slowly added the remaining 50 pounds of sugar, almost doubled our volume. Uh, so we've gone from 10 gallons of water down to pretty close to 20 gallons of sugar syrup. Uh, not quite though. And just letting it agitate. I've also added uh, the honeybee healthy to it as well. So we're gonna let that agitate for a little while. One thing to keep in mind is this is going to 
mix better for you if the water is warm, not boiling, but warm. Now we have, uh, and it's sitting way over there in the corner, you can see, we have that big steam kettle. So we're able to warm the water right here in the shop. And eventually we'll have a big water heater right here. Cause we're still working on rebuilding. Um, so the water we put in there was warm. Now, although I found with this uh, drum mixer, you really don't have to warm the water that much. That sump pump, I'm letting it run long enough in there um, that the heat generated by it is actually warming the mixture. And it's agitating very, very well anyway. So it, it's going to be completely, uh, the sugar's going to be completely dissolved and it's going to be well mixed, uh, whether we warm the water or not. But I still like to use warm water when possible. If you're doing small batches, because uh, you only have one or two hives of feed, I highly recommend just go ahead and warm it. It's going to make it mix a lot quicker and a lot easier for you if you're standing there in the kitchen stirring with a spoon. That gets old. Um, that's one of the reasons we've had to upgrade. Uh, you've only got two, three, four, maybe even ten hives. It's easy. Um, when you're talking pushing 200, uh, you've got to have a way to bulk feed and bulk mix. So we're going to let that finish mixing. We'll pump it out into our containers, and I'll take you out to where we're doing the open feeding and show you one of the ways we open feed. Sun get low on the horizon, bad on the eyes. So right here, now I'm gonna kind of show you how we open feed, or at least one of the ways we open feed um, our bees. We are approximately, I would guess, 350, 400 yards away from um, where our bee hives are located here at the home bee yard, right near our pond. And here's how we're going to feed. So we've got a 27-gallon tote. Which you can pick up any of the big box stores, Lowe's, Home Depot, whatever it is. We've drilled some holes in the side of it. I think these are two and a half inch. I've got three on each side. You could put some in the ends if you wanted. <coughs> and we're going to fill this up to just below those holes with sugar water and put the lid on it. We tried various different methods uh, to keep bees from drowning. We tried just cut up pool noodles. We tried sticks. Um, but the best combination we found is pine straw. And this has got a combination of pool noodles and pine straw in it. Um, and that'll give the bees somewhere to sit um, when they're drinking. But what you have to think about is there's going to be a ton of bees trying to feed from here. And they're going to pile in on top of one another and the weight of the bees will force other bees to drown. So by using this pine straw, that kind of helps alleviate that. And we've not had a big issue um, with drowning uh, with that method. So we're going to go ahead and fill it up now. Okay, we've got our full. You can see the pine straw there is just at the level of the holes. It's floating. And that should get the job done for us. That took about 16 gallons. Like I said earlier in the shop, I'm no mathematologist, um, but we had 10 gallons of water. We added 100 pounds of sugar, and we came out with about 18 gallons of uh, feed. Like I just said, we've got 15 gallons in there. So that's one of the ways we open feed. I know open feeding is a contentious subject as well as just feeding period is. Um, and would I prefer to do all in hive feeding or hive top feeding? Sure, yeah, I, I probably would. Um, but sometimes things aren't cost effective. If you've got two, three, four, ten hives buying ten feeders at $25 a pop, if that's how you want to feed with an in hive feeder, you can probably eat 250 bucks. Multiply that times 50, um, and, and things get expensive really, really quick. And for a sideliner like me, I just can't afford that. You know, I hear people saying open feeding, it's a mite bomb waiting to happen. Yeah, it probably is to an extent, but if you've ever been around a Chinese tallow tree um, during a, a good nectar flow, yeah, that's a night bomb too, one tree. So mites are something we're going to have to deal with, especially down here in the south. I'm going to treat anyway, um, so I just accept that. Uh, but is this a perfect world? Probably not, not open feeding. And that's why I make sure on my weaker colonies anyway, um, we feed them either in hive or, or on hive top with hive top feeders. Uh, it seems to work pretty good. So that's kind of how we feed. It's just one way to skin the cat. You can scale up, scale down based on the size of your operation. If you watched uh, my buddy Bruce Jenny's channel, Bruce's Bees, you saw or just a couple weeks ago we built uh, a mobile feeder out of a 270 gallon IBC tote and 
I'm in the process of doing that. I'm looking for a trailer that can be a single use trailer that we can put that on and, and not ever have to take it off. I've got a tote already. So we're gonna build another one of those and that make life a lot easier for some of our, some of our offsite bee yards. All right, well, another wonderful day here at Man Can Bee Ranch. What was most wonderful about it? I didn't have to mow grass, but I mowed grass yesterday. So y'all keep on keeping on. And one thing I f failed to mention just a second ago is, so I put about 16 gallons of feed in that feeder. Typically when I open feed, I'm only gonna put enough, how much in there I know they can get rid of in about 24 hours. We've got a, maybe an hour, hour and a half daylight left today. Um, the bees will find this, they're already finding it now. And uh, I promise you that 16 gallons by this time tomorrow will be gone with the, I don't know, 40 or so, maybe 50 hives that I have here. Um, so they'll go through it pretty quick.